terminal device and the three terminals are base, emitter and collector. Because of this we have three transistor configurations. The first configuration is common base configuration, common base configuration. The second configuration is common emitter configuration, common emitter configuration. The third and last configuration is common common collector configuration. Out of these three, common emitter configuration is mostly used because of various advantages. In this lecture, I will explain common base configuration. In common base configuration, base is common to input and output circuit. This is input circuit. This side is input side and this side is output side. If you see the direction of emitter current in the transistor symbol, you will find this transistor is N PN transistor in which this is emitter, this is collector and this is base. So base is common to the input circuit and the output circuit and it is grounded and it is grounded in common base configuration. I am calling this side input side and this side output side because weak signal because weak signal is introduced on this side and we have amplified signal amplified signal on this side and this will happen only when the transistor operates in active mode so there is amplification of weak signal in active mode there are two junctions in transistor junction J1 and junction J2 in active mode of operation junction J1 is forward biased and junction J2 is reverse biased. Junction J1 is the junction of diode EB. Junction J1 is the junction of diode EB. Junction J2 is the junction of diode BC. Junction of diode BC. We can consider transistor as two diodes connected back to back. So diode EB is forward biased and diode BC is reverse biased in active mode. I will forward bias EB let's say this resistance is RE emitter is N type material and base is P type material so emitter is connected to the negative terminal and base is connected to the positive terminal and I will call this forward biasing potential VEE -E. now I will reverse bias the diode BC this resistance is RC collector is N type material and base is P type material so to reverse bias BC collector is connected to the positive terminal and base is connected to the negative terminal I will call this reverse biasing potential VCC if I compare diode and transistor diode is a single port device single port device and transistor is a two port device in case of diode we have simple VI characteristics in case of diode we have simple VI characteristics but in case of two port devices like transistor we have input and output characteristics in case of input characteristics we have plot between the input current the input current in this circuit is IE the emitter current and the input voltage is VBE and in case of output characteristics we have plot between output current output current is IC and output voltage is VCB so the next thing is to find out direction of currents currents IE IB and IC and what is this voltage VBE and this voltage VCB from the symbol of transistor you can see the direction of emitter current IE is like this and direction of base current IB is like this and direction of collector current IC is like this if you don't know how we have obtained these directions then please watch the previous lecture I have explained how we have these directions in the transistor circuit VBE VBE is this potential if you neglect RE like I did in the previous presentation for the sake of simplicity then you will have VBE VBE equal to VEE this is what we have in the same way 
VCB is the potential difference across the base and collector and VCB is equal to VCC if we neglect RC. Now there is one very important thing that I want to explain. You cannot write VBE as VEB. If you follow the proper nomenclature, you cannot write VBE as VEB because B is at higher potential and E is at lower potential. So B will come first, then will come E. In the same way, if you see the collector, it is at higher potential and base is at lower potential. So in representation, C will come first and later will come B. So this is important thing. If you follow the proper nomenclature, you have this representations for input voltage and output voltage. I'm not going to explain the input and output characteristics in this lecture. We will continue with them in the next lecture. In this lecture, I will use KCL to obtain the relation between the emitter current, the base current and the collector current. We already know from Kirchhoff's current law, the sum of entering current is equal to the sum of leaving current. In this circuit, you can clearly see IE is the leaving current and it is the only leaving current so it is equal to IB plus IC because they are entering currents IB plus IC so this is the first equation that we have in this lecture and it is very important there is one more thing that you must keep in your mind this equation is true for active for active mode of operation only the next thing is the collector current the collector current IC is equal to alpha times IE plus ICO. This is the reverse saturation current. I will rename the reverse saturation current for the common base configuration. I will add B in the representation or IC is equal to alpha times IE plus ICBO where this B stands for the common base configuration. The next thing is the comparison between the emitter current IE and the reverse saturation current ICBO. This O stands for open circuit because we measure this current when the emitter terminal is open. When we compare IE and ICBO, the emitter current is greater than the reverse saturation current because reverse saturation current is due to the minority charge carriers and they are very small in number. So we can neglect ICBO and IC, IC the collector current is simply equal to alpha times IE. So we can say that alpha is equal to IC divided by IE. This is very important relation. Alpha is equal to IC by IE. Now what is alpha? Alpha is common base current gain. Alpha is common base current gain and you already know gain is equal to the output by input IC is output current and IE is input current so alpha is the common base current gain and it is also called as amplification factor amplification factor so these are the two names for alpha and alpha is between 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 this implies 95 percent to 98 percent emitter current is the collector current and this also implies there is 5 percent recombination in base and in this case there is 2 percent recombination in base and base current IB is equal to 1 minus alpha times IE so these are the important relations that you must note down and I think this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture, I will explain how to obtain the input characteristics in case of common base transistor. In the previous lecture, I explained the common base configuration of transistor. Now I will explain the early lecture I explained the common base configuration of transistor now I will explain the early effect the early effect and by using this we will plot the input characteristics of common base transistor the input characteristics is simply the characteristics of forward bias diode it is the characteristics of the forward biased 
diode. I will explain this point. It is the graphical relation between the input current and the input voltage for different values of output voltage. It is the graphical relation between the input current and the input voltage input voltage for different for different output voltages this is what we have in input characteristics of common base transistor this is the common base configuration of the transistor i am using npn transistor this is emitter this is base and this is collector and we already know in case of npn transistor this is the direction of emitter current IE this is the direction of base current IB and this is the direction of collector current IC I am considering the active mode of operation so junction J1 is forward biased and junction J2 is reverse biased this potential difference is equal to VBE and this potential difference is equal to VCB I am calling this configuration common base configuration because base is common to the input side and the output side. On the input side the current is IE and the voltage is VBE. So the input current the input current is simply equal to IE the emitter current and the input voltage is equal to VBE. The input voltage is equal to VBE. On the output side the current is IC so the output current is equal to IC the collector current and VCB is the output voltage output voltage is VCB so we have to plot we have to plot the graphical relation between IE and VBE for different values of VCB now I will prove the input characteristics of common base transistor is similar to the characteristics of forward bias diode I have already told you we can consider transistor as two diodes connected back to back we have NPN transistor so we have two diodes connected like this this is NP this is PN so this is like NPN transistor this is diode D1 this is diode D2 in active mode of operation diode D1 is forward biased and diode D2 is reverse biased and we are plotting the input characteristics input characteristics is between the input current and the input voltage for different values of output voltage the input current is IE the input voltage is VBE which is the current and voltage through and across the diode D1 so we are simply plotting the forward biased characteristics of a diode and it is very simple we can easily plot the forward biased characteristics for a diode this axis is for current that is IE in milliamps the X axis is for the voltage across the diode that is VBE and it is measured in volts and the forward characteristics will simply look like this let's say the barrier potential is equal to 0 0.7 volts because we are considering silicon as the semiconductor material we are considering the silicon diode so barrier potential is equal to 0 0.7 volts and this is the forward bias characteristics of a diode and this is also the input characteristics of common base transistor but the important thing is the effect on characteristics with change in VCB let's say this plot is for VCB equal to 1 volts and now we have to study the effect on characteristics when we increase or decrease the output voltage that is VCB to understand this effect we first need to understand the early effect we first need to study the early effect the early effect very important concept in analog electronics this effect is also known as base width modulation this is also known as base width modulation and it is named after James M Early after James M Early who discovered early effect in early effect there is modulation of base width when we increase the reverse bias voltage VCB when we increase the reverse bias voltage VCB there is modulation of base width this is emitter region this is base region and this is collector region 
Junction J1 is forward biased, junction J2 is reverse biased and in reverse bias condition width of depletion layer width of depletion layer increases and the depletion layer will penetrate more in the base region because it is lightly doped. Because of light doping hole concentration is low and easy uncovering of immobile ions will take place. You can see penetration of depletion layer is more in base region and this is because base is lightly doped. The depletion layer will have the negative immobile ions on the base side because we are considering an PN transistor and it will have positive immobile ions on the collector side because collector is N type material. Let's say let's say W B W sub B is width of base width of base or we can call it metallurgical base width. The total width of base region is equal to W sub B W sub B and let's say the width of depletion layer penetrated in the base region is equal to W and the width of region with no depletion layer is equal to W effective. From here we can see WB is equal to W effective W effective plus W so we can say that W effective is equal to WB minus W now if we increase VCB the output voltage or the reverse bias potential W will increase on increasing VCB on increasing VCB W will increase because penetration of depletion layer will increase in the base region and when W increases W effective will decrease W effective will decrease W effective is the width of region where recombination takes place. This is the region where recombination takes place and width of this region is equal to W effective. So when W effective decreases the chance of recombination in base region also decreases and this will increase the input current IE. As the chance of recombination is reducing the IE will increase. The base was thin and because of penetration of depletion layer it is now thinner. So chance of recombination reduces and the input current IE increases. The other reason is increase in concentration gradient. The other reason is increase in concentration gradient because of decrement in W effective. The concentration gradient is the main reason for the movement of charge carriers. The electrons on the N side will move towards the base because of concentration gradient as the area is decreasing the concentration will definitely increase and because of this more electrons will flow towards the base and this will also increase the input current IE. So we can say that on increasing VCB the output voltage on increasing VCB the output voltage the input current will increase so the final characteristics including the effect of VCB will look like this. The current IE will increase with increase in VCB like this. This plot is for VCB equal to 5 volts VCB equal to 5 volts and this plot is for VCB equal to 10 volts. So with increase in VCB the input current IE will also increase and the remaining thing is similar to the forward bias characteristics of PN junction diode. I hope everything explained in this lecture is clear to you. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.